the world of football with a soccer perspective. This is Soccer Today with Dwayne Mullins and Kevin Laramie, live on the Sports Podcasting Network. Good day, good night, welcome to Soccer Today. I'm Kevin Laramie. This is Friday, December 17th. 2021. I'm joined by Dwayne Rollins as always, and today is our last show of 2021. Our last show before the holidays, before Christmas. Dwayne, how are you today? I'm I'm doing well. I'm trying to figure out if it's the last show of 2021. Uh, that means we're going into season. What are we at? Uh, seven next year. Wow. Sure. In my mind, seasons is more than season is from the fall to the spring. But I guess not nowadays. They make seasons half seasons make count as seasons. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to say exactly. Um, well, because you know Netflix and all that sort of stuff. When you're talking about TV work, but uh, no, we've been doing this since 2014. Uh, there'd be a symbolic. Uh, hopefully, there'll be a symbolic reason uh, on the in you know summer or in January, February this year when the Olympics happen. That's that's knock on wood i'm hitting my head right now that happens but uh, <laughs> yes. yeah and yes and today of course is a it's a tradition now we do what's called our christmas show so Dwayne and i are gonna get dressed as santa claus and we're gonna hand out our favorite gifts some of them are a little funny some of them are things that really some soccer teams or some soccer characters or persona in the industry really need and it's a little bit of show where Dwayne and I have a little bit of fun and we can talk and we'll bring it left, right, and we'll bring it back in the middle and then we'll give our gifts. Five each, no holds barred. It's the season of giving. It is, yes. And there's no call. I, I, I tried to not put, give any call this year because I don't want to be the Grinch all the time. No, there's enough calls out there in the real world, you know, and uh, I think it's Star Dwayne. We don't necessarily have them in order, but you gave me one to five. But you want to start with number one, I guess, is yes. We'll start with the first one you've given me because it's a needed gift. It's something very important, and I'll let you describe it in a second. But, Dwayne, this one is for Christine Sinclair. Yeah, I want to give Christine Sinclair a proper send-off. And look, it's up to her when she wants to actually walk away from the game, and we're not sure exactly when that's going to be, but it is going to be relatively soon in the grand context of a career. It, it, there's not many more kicks of the ball left. And I don't know if we've ever... Like, they were supposed to have the gold medal tour, and I get that it costs money, and I get that the CSA doesn't have the same amount of money that the U.S. Soccer Federation has, so they can't just do these barnstorming tours. But... It's two games against New Zealand doesn't really cut it for me. I would hope that maybe if they are going to send her out and maybe it is time to like move on a little bit to try and bread that new to blood that next generation. But more to the point to give her a bit of a break because she's done enough for us. She's done enough for the soccer community here. Her legs think, need a break after carrying the country for two decades. Exactly. And, and what she deserves is a proper testimonial. An absolute Phil BC place, and it should be BC place because she's from out there. Yes, her family should be there, everyone involved, and it should be at BC place because it's about her. It's not about us wanting to go to the game, and that would be awesome. And open the upper bowl and uh, pack the place. Yeah, and maybe make it a, you know, versus the rest of the world kind of thing or Sinclair and friends. It doesn't necessarily even have to yes. be a Canada thing. You're right. Well, Yes, on one side. Or no, you're right, because the amount of players she played with for the Thorns, and of course now the coach of the Thorns, we haven't even talked about this. The coach of the Thorns, of course, is Diana Matheson. Uh, no, sorry. It's... Uh, Katrina LeBlanc's the GM. Exactly. And yeah. it's... Uh, uh, geez, the name escapes me. She was uh, involved in Canada. And of course, I'm going to get the name in a few minutes, but it, there's a whole lot of story with the Thorns and Christine St. Clair and the national team. And of course, players from abroad like Marta. I would love Marta to be part of that testimonial, right? So Christine St. Clair and friends versus the rest of the world. And you have maybe players from Mia Hamm to other players she played against over the last few decades in that team of the rest of the world. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'm not sure if she crossed me a ham. I'd have to look that up. But, me too, but, but I, you know, it might be just, just a bit off, but who knows? It should yeah. be uh, something similar. Well, the point you're making, though, is what I was going to go to next. They don't necessarily, like, if you do end friends, one of those type of games, and make it a little bit of fun, you can bring an Abby Wambach back You could, if she wanted to play. And I think that they're somewhat, I don't know, close is the right way to put it, but there's respect there anyway, yes, we right? we don't know. Is the rivalry there still? Who knows, you know? Yeah. 
but then you can take that away and it doesn't have to be all about partisanship. And, and we don't see, we see that in the men's game sometimes, you know, sort of all-star games or, or uh, old timer games. We'd call them here up in, in Canada with, with when we play the hockey guys, but it can be a lot of fun and you can have some good times with it and you can raise some good money for a charity of her choice or, or even just to give her, I guess, if you want you know, to spread around to the, the other women that she's played with, who knows what she wants to do with it. It's up to her. Uh, but I just think that exactly. we, well, we have to make sure we give her a good buy. It's up to her. If you ask Christine St. Clair, so your testimony should be like, I don't want one. So, yeah. so it's not up to her. It's up to us, but it's up to her to choose who's part of the game. Yeah. And, and <laughs> that, what you're the point, there's a final point on this, which, you know, maybe she wants to keep playing and that's true too. I mean, father yeah. time and all, or mother time, I guess in this sure. case is undefeated as we've said many times in the show. And I, we've seen her, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to we've seen her slow down, but it's, yeah, it, it, look. Herschel Walker still won a professional fight in his 50s after <laughs> retiring 15 years earlier from football. Who knows? The sky is the limit, right? Who knows, exactly. <laughs> but internationally, maybe, if she yeah, does right. want to keep playing, maybe she can play for the Thorns for a few more years and, and take a step back internationally, and that'd be fine, too. Uh, and uh, Yeah. She needs a good buck. The team needs some kind too, like to celebrate the gold medal. Two games against New Zealand, don't cut it. So let's hope they get something going on next summer if you want to even just put it on that side. Well, that's definitely true. And we'll see how that unfolds, of course. And we'll see what she decides to do. But we'll uh, look into the possibilities of going if there's ever a testimonial game for Christine St. Clair. It'll be our pleasure to do that. By the way, the head coach of the Portland Thornstone is Canadian. And, of course, Quebecer, Ryan Wilkinson. I knew I had that in my head, but for some reason I had Diane Matheson. We forgot to talk about this, but congratulations to Ryan Wilkinson. And uh, she is the manager of the Thorns. It was announced a few weeks ago. Dwayne, ah, it's my turn. I'm going to give my gift. And here's my gift. My gift is, of course, for every. CF Montreal fan that has been through a lot over the last year, through a lot since this match in 2009. You're getting a rematch. You're getting a revenge opportunity in a two-legged series. And maybe this time around, number 12 won't be there to score, but maybe he'll be in the stands to cheer. And maybe CF Montreal overcomes one demon, gets rid of one skeleton in the closet, and gets rid of Santos Laguna in this year's Champions League. Yeah, uh, I didn't have a chance to talk about the Champions League draw because I, I was a little under the weather from, um, from when I got my boosters. So I was a little under the weather from that. And uh, yeah, so I, I think the draw that both Canadian teams got is one of those ones that you I think they can't lose in, right? Like the, there's a lot of opportunity to to make some points without necessarily putting themselves at too much of a risk because they will be the underdogs in both cases. But look, um, yeah, the, there is certainly some history there. Uh, you know, there's history with Central Laguna in general, just in the Canadian teams, because they all have a little brawl in the middle of Beemo Field, too. <laughs> yeah, they they don't leave a club indifferent, that's for sure. Yeah, it, that, that game is, you know, which led to the Herc Gomez interview, uh, which, uh, you know, so that's going back a long time ago now. But at any rate, our first interview with Herc, we've had him on a couple of times. Um, look, yeah, it, it's going to be fun. The CCL is always always a good way to kick off the year. Uh, you know, is this going to be the year where hashtag 4MLS wins something or maybe hashtag Campiel? We don't know. Yeah, who knows? So, maybe maybe uh, maybe Forge will get on a run. Forge will be playing against Cruz Azul. And by the way, if you want to know more about the Champions League that will be happening in February, you can always listen to yesterday's show and you can watch yesterday's show. We have all the details on the bracket and everything. And if you missed it, you can follow it on, of course, everywhere you find your favorite podcast. Dwayne, let's give your second gift. So you have your big red velvet sack. And the second gift that comes out of the gift is for a very... Big name in the region of Toronto for soccer. This one's for Josie. Yeah, I want to give him his passion back because, look, I have a lot of time for Josie Altator, the footballer, for what he's done for this club here. Um, he is undoubtedly, you know, the club I follow the closest. He is undoubtedly the the most, in, well, he's up there, one of the top three or four most important players that has ever played for it. I mean, it's a short history, but it's still getting long enough that you can say something like that. And, and certainly he scored 
what is undoubtedly the most important goal in, this, in the club's history, the goal that won them a championship. So, look, he hasn't been his own sorts for a while. And we talk about his injuries. We talk about the hammies being, you know, made of one of broken elastic. I don't know what they're made of. They're made of something that's not very strong is what they're made of. But I also think that with Josie, particularly this year, you have to fight through the injuries a bit too. And I don't think that there was a desire to fight through them because I don't think he has his passion to play right now. And and I don't know what his passion is going to be or where it's going to be. It might not even be in the sport, but I hope that he finds it again because that's what defines him as a, as a man is his passion is his strength of his own beliefs in himself. And when that's missing, he's just kind of a shell of himself and, Look, we all think we've talked to death about the situation in Toronto and the contract and all that sort of stuff. And my opinion has been out there a hundred times on that. So I don't want to go there. So so this is more of a, a gift of hope for the man himself rather than the player that he could find a joy and a passion back. And maybe that's owning a team. Maybe that's coaching. Maybe yeah. that's maybe that's watching his his girlfriend play tennis. I don't know. Yeah. Like something. Hey, I would imagine just being like someone's number one fan and you can follow them around the world. And that sounds in enticing to me too that could be very interesting we'll see where Josie lands if it's not in Toronto he is under contract for next year there's also one buyout available per team which Dwayne leads me to my next choice because Dwayne doesn't know my uh, my gifts yet so uh, my gift Dwayne this one is for Montreal fans so we're Montreal and Toronto heavy to start the show the gift of a buyout Bye bye Bjorn Jansen. Out of town you go after only two goals this season. It is the end of the Bjorn Johnson experiment. <laughs> that is my gift to all Montreal fans that are still looking for a striker that can put the ball in the back of the net. I, I was laughing there when you said the end of the, the Bjorn, Bjorn Johnson uh, you experienced it. I thought you were going to say era for a second. Uh, an era has to start and to end. And when it never really starts, it's an experiment. It's not an era. Yeah. Uh, back <laughs> in the early days of the 24th minute blog, that was always my joke because TFC had so much turnover that every time a player would get released after like five games, I'd write the end. It's the end of the blank era. So I wrote that like 12 times. So it was kind of a haha thing after a while because clearly I was being sarcastic. Although not everyone picks up on sarcasm. Well, sometimes no, you, you'd be surprised how people don't uh, don't pick up on sarcasm. Just, just ask the Netmeg News, which every single day goes through that experience. Yeah, it, it's a lot. But look, it didn't work out. Um, and you got to use those, di- those buyouts you know correctly because they're, they're pretty serious. Like once you buy a player out, you can't ever sign them back again. Uh, that's one of the rules. And it's one of the things I think that might be holding the Josie situation up a little bit with a year on his contract. Look, it's not to make it about Josie again, but to tie it in, you've got to make sure that there's no value in the player. You've got to make sure that you can't sell the player somewhere because then you're giving up value. It's better <laughs> off for you to find a way to move them. Even for like peanuts, even to move them at a loss, it doesn't matter. But, you know, will <laughs> will you get value for Bjorn Janssen? No. Uh, Hyundai or Yosan are still laughing from from being able to offload him. They're still like, woohoo, we were able to sell the monorail. Thank you very much, North Hamburg. You were able to, to help us out by buying the monorail, which was Bjorn Janssen. Bjorn Janssen is the monorail. And uh, we have to uh, to get it out of town. Monorail. Uh, yeah, no. Like, monorail. Monorail. As you say, I mean... You know, sometimes let's say you buy a stock and that stock is tanking. It's better to sell that stock when it's like worth half of what you bought it for <laughs> than it is to just let it go completely. Exactly. Exactly. In other words, when your money is on one team and the other team score first, get the odds until they change. Edge your bet is what I'm saying. There you go. And look, yeah, like you got to use it. And it does tie into the last gift, too, because you got to figure that out. Uh, with with in terms of what you want to do on an MLS perspective, but uh, you know, no one wants to, the, the cruel thing about what we do on this show and what we do in sports media is that we're basically talking about people's livelihoods here, and and it's harsh to sometimes say it in these terms, but it is a re- results based business. Exactly, and exactly. The results you know, weren't there. Uh, I will go back to the last game of the regular season. If you watched it on TV Aspa, you saw that segment in French, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little bit of context for our English listener and. It was really used, not sarcastically, but to show, like, look, 
He thought he was different. Dwayne, we had a segment uh, re recorded before the beginning of the season interviewing the player saying, where will you be in five years? What type of player are you? And in five years, like, uh, I'll be here as the leading scorer of Montreal for the last five years. And I'll be here scoring 20 goals and 10 goals. You're like, yeah, so so it's not a question of belief. It, he thought that was there. It's execution is always a bit different. I think he's had a really interesting career in the sport. And maybe he came back to MLS, as I said, two days ago, a couple years too late. And maybe he might have been at least a impact sub or something had he come back a little bit earlier in his career. But, you know, that said, you go to Japan, you go to Israel, you go to play in MLS at the end. Like, that's that's not a bad little ride that he's had. I mean, no, of course. I, and uh, Korea was also a, a yeah, big, yeah. big part of it. I said Japan, it was Korea. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that's fine. But so... Now we'll see if he stays with Montreal, but that's my gift for Montreal fans, the buyout of Bjorn Janssen. Now Dwayne's third gift is Toronto Focus. It is time for a honeymoon for the six. Yeah, for Bob Bradley in particular, um, I know this fan base pretty well, and I know how impatient it can be. And how much pressure that can put on things. There's there's pros and cons to being in an engaged fan base in MLS. Like, I mean, it's great if in some levels, if you're in a Colorado or if you're in a Dallas or something, where not to say that the passionate fans there aren't passionate, but there's just not as many of them, right? So you don't have that pressure immediately. And Bob Bradley, with the reputation that he's coming in, uh, is going to be expected to turn things around instantly. And I don't think this offseason, because we wait till my next gift, COVID's crank it back up again it's going to be another weird uh transfer window i'm not sure whether they can get their main targets to the summer like it might not be as smooth like this might be i don't think they could dip any further than they dipped because a lot went wrong last year that i don't think is going to go wrong again but to expect tfc to go from under 30 points to back above 60 in one season is asking a lot and i think that's what the fan base expects particularly if they get yeah. some of their targets right so, yeah patience is what i'm asking for i'm asking the fans to give bob bradley some patience <laughs> and accept that maybe next year is not a playoff year maybe it's just to go out and reacquaint yourself with enjoying the stadium for the stadium's sake and just watching games hopefully in safe environment and and enjoying yourself and and then working up to maybe getting back over that 60 point champion chasing a championship threshold again in a year or so 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 yeah. patience is what i'm asking for so Dwayne is asking for patience for bob bradley and that's a really good Way to start a new project because you need patience at the beginning, even if you start that project with money and with experience, which will be the case for Bob Bradley, of course, when he takes over officially as a new manager of Toronto FC. We'll take a short break. We're literally in the halfway mark of our gift giving extravaganza. After the break, we'll continue. We have some gifts for teams, gifts for individuals, gifts for coaches that are coming after the break. We'll be right back, and hopefully you can come back and join us for the rest of our Christmas show after this short break. You are listening to Soccer Today. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Today SPN and like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash sports podcasting network. You can find the podcast version of all the shows we do on iTunes, Apple Podcast, Google Play Store, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and anywhere you get your podcast. And we're back on Soccer Today, the rest of the Christmas show. I'm Kev Laramie, joined by Dwayne Rollins. As always, as we continue to hand out the gifts to the ones we love, the ones we love to hate, and the ones we love to follow across the world of soccer, this is the time of year where we feel generous or not. <laughs> At least there's not a lot of calls like Dwayne mentioned mm -hmm. earlier in the show. Dwayne, I'm going to go and give you my third gifts here. This one is for all the Canadian men's national team players heading into the holiday. I'm giving you all the gift of health and 
unbreakable bones and ligaments all the way to the end of January. This is my <laughs> gift for all Canadian men's national team fans also. A January and February in health, in prosperity, and in victory. Yeah, that's going to be a big, big part of our January plans. We'll be t part of the reason we're taking an extended break this year, which isn't that long. It's much shorter than most, but is because it's going to be a big push to that January 30th yeah, game. And uh, we need to be ready because, uh, well, Dwayne can attest, but I can also attest. During the last Canada period, uh, our numbers broke records. We were beating hockey podcasters in Canada and stuff. So we'll make sure we're ready for the next window. Yeah, and, and yeah, we'll, we'll probably do some some extra stuff around that time, and then we're going into the Olympics. Which, oh my God, I mean, I'm already tired thinking about it. But exactly. It's be so fun. the next the next two weeks that we're taking off are actually like not really off. We're just planning more things for next week, uh, yeah, next exactly. year, which is I also need a break because I think next week is next year, which is that's in a few weeks from now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look, I mean, in terms of the bubble wrap gift you just gave them, yeah, I, I agree. I concur. I almost gave the same gift, so you know, I'm glad you got it. <laughs> um, I watched the Bayern Munich game earlier this week uh, when they won six nil, and I was like, just, just get him off, just get him off. <laughs> it's it's a fiftieth minute, send him off. Uh, of course he won't, because Nagelsmann is having the best beginning of the season in the history of Bayern Munich as the new manager. But you know, yeah, that's what happens. It, it, they're such a machine right now, too. My God, um, like I, I, two years of I, you can by Christmas time most years. I can kind of get a feel, and I'm not alone on this. You kind of get a feel of who's going to win the Champions League, and I'm, you're usually right nine times out of ten. So, Chelsea kind of blew us away last year because they came out of left field. But well, yes, because in in at Christmas time they were not a good team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they still had not the same manager. By the way, if you're wondering why this year we're not breaking down Boxing Day, we're not breaking down those matches yet because, well, due to present circumstances around the world, we don't know what's going to happen during these matches for now. Yep, yep, we don't. We don't and, even know uh, if they're going to take place because some clubs have voted for the suspension of the entire league for now. So, Yeah, it, which is sad to think of, but, um, you know, life has to take priority. We've got it's not We're not our first rodeo. None no, of it's like a, it's like we're, we're really experienced. What is the K-League doing and will you still be playing is what we're asking ourselves right now. Yes, yeah, so if you're new to listening to us, we, uh, did, we were one of the few podcasts out there that did not pause. For the entire early parts of March 2020, and my heavens, we reviewed TV shows, guys. It was not as what I ever want to do again, but we'll get yeah, through it if we have we'll, to. We'll and that kind of sets it. up my next gift, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. What is your next gift, Wayne? Uh, the gift of this damn plague ending so that the people of Hamilton, which sold out a game in seconds, a uh, Canadian national team, men's national team game, sells out in seconds, is not a sentence that I thought I would ever say in my life. Um, but it did, and there are a lot of people that are frustrated that they couldn't get tickets because it was a bit chaotic to try and get in and to get them yesterday. But <laughs> Normally, nonetheless. people can be late to get tickets. Normally, people can not worry about it until game day, and there's tickets available for Kenyan Men's National Team games. I guess times have changed is what I'm saying. Y yeah, absolutely, and so we want this to take place for a lot of reasons. And look, I think the game will take place because FIFA... Like, you can't afford it anymore, like, other than to go and play the games of guitar. Well, which, which is already going to happen. So the the playoff game will take place the two weeks before the Qatar World Cup. So if Canada finishes fourth, you won't even know if you're going to Qatar until, well, October 2022. Well, you'll be going to Qatar. Just might, maybe not for the tournament. <laughs> okay, the whole. fine, fine. You don't know if you're going to the World <laughs> Cup final. We're going to Qatar, sort of. We're going to, to Qatar. Qatar. Not to the World Cup final. Not to the World Cup. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, uh, to play New Zealand. But, um, yeah, look, I just want these games to take place. We want the games to take place with a full engaged crowd out there. I want to be part of it. I, I have tickets, so I will be part of it, um, you know, provided it happens. And this is not this is a serious gift in that. And, I, and, you know, you talk about the Boxing Day fixtures. You talk about anything. Like, I mean, it's scary again. And talk about hopefully... hockey games, uh, Dwayne. Like. <laughs> There's a Montreal hockey game that got canceled tomorrow, and I'm wor I work in sports, and let me tell you, I have to check what's happening every day because some days you're not going to go to work because they're going to tell you to stay home. So <laughs> it's, yeah. it's what happens during these times right now. And look, I mean, yeah, you know, we know the drill by now, like we do. It's coming on to two years in March, so... Hopefully soon, and hopefully we'll be done talking about this this <laughs> dumb plague soon. But yeah, the the one the thing that I'm thinking of most of is that January 30th game, and and I hope that hope to heavens that 
it is takes place as scheduled and that we continue on a you know a few weeks later and have Champions League games and then a couple weeks after that have yeah. MLS games in our home market. That would be of course the goal because January comes quickly. February and hey, it's Champions League time already. February, so it comes very quickly. Also, wishing this is a bonus gift for Montreal soccer fans, wishing for not a lot of snow, no ice, and no snowstorms in the middle of January and February. Thank you very much. So we can use the Olympic Stadium. And here we go. Moving on, Dwayne, to my official fourth gift. This one, Dwayne, is to all the videographers. All the statisticians, all the graphic designers in Major League Soccer for next season. No new logos during the regular season. C can we make this clear, people? You're allowed to change your logos. Can you decide before the regular season? Can you make it official? Or are you going to have to send me, again, press releases with PNGs and AIs and JIFs? of freaking logos in the middle of the season and then we have to change all the transitions all the freaking things all season long and then have to ask ourselves which logo do i use columbus is it the round one is it the ugly one what do we do do you change your yellow or no what the heck the gift of reprise for 2022 yeah just give us back the village people um honestly and put barbasol on that shirt and i'm buying one tomorrow morning yeah there you have it uh yeah, rest in peace, Cran Flag. Uh, that that the the Rev centered a photo of them turning the sign off in their office. That was that was a fitting way to end it, I guess. Yeah, but, but you uh, know, at least they decided before the regular season started. So next year we'll do our transitions. We'll do even for this show now. I'll have all my my graphics ready with my standings and my team transitions for the video transitions and all. You know. And then I won't have to change it during the season. It makes no sense to have a logo change during the season. And they did it twice this year. Thank you very much, Columbus. And who else, who else is the other one? Chicago. Jeez. Yeah, rest in peace, SC Columbus. Um, <laughs> that, that did not last long. Two, two weeks. Oh, my heavens. Look, yeah, I think that um, I'll expand on that gift and just give MLS the idea, to, to the, the hint that maybe just stop rebranding things for a few years because you know what i know you paid a lot of money for that marketing study that none of us have seen and i know that that marketing <laughs> study told you that they needed to brand your teams in such a way that were yeah. clearly identifiable as football teams <laughs> i understand that that's what the findings were but we're kind of sick of it now well, yeah, every wait. team sounds the same <laughs> wait Dwayne. In 10 years, when they all change and bring back the vintage logos and the vintage shirt and the Wizards are back, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're yeah. going to sell a ton of jerseys and they're going to sell a ton of soccer balls because they'll bring back the the Pentagon black and white soccer ball that we all want. Yeah, that one I want for sure. Um, and that one, if that one happens, come on, Adidas, if you're smart enough, this should be used already. The amount of, oh, it's just it going to work. They did a similar one. I think it was two euro, like the not this past summer, but the euro before that. I think there was kind of a black and white pattern on it, but it wasn't quite the same. Just go full on, like let's yeah, do it. Exactly. Go retro. Anyway, that's a different story. But no, the rebranding stuff. Like I mean, you're, you're in a city. Oh, rebrand! I don't give a damn. I'm just at least don't do it during the season. You know, <laughs> that what yeah. makes also no sense is you have to do everything twice. Like literally, the stadium boards like. The marketing boards, everything that has your logo has to be changed when you do that in season. It makes no financial sense and makes no business acumen sense, if you know what I mean. Anyways, this is a, a, a business discussion at this point almost. But come on, people. If you just decide to do it, do it when it's time, like everybody else in the offseason. Yeah, I'm not sure what they were thinking with that, whether they thought maybe they'd get more of a bang if they did it in season or if they were just, you know, had trouble getting trademarks registered or something. But you're right. It was kind of a mess. It seems like seven years ago, too, because, you know, a lot happened this year. And <laughs> a lot happened. Yes, that's yeah. true. All right, Dwayne, your last gift for this one. This one's amazing. I'm going to set the table. Dwayne, here you go. Your last gift. We've got the bells. What is it and who is it for? It's for a Coach Vanny out there in uh, in uh, Vancouver. I want him to have like an Amazon uh, documentary crew, like follow him everywhere because he's become like this cult hero. And I think we should lean right into it. The Whitecaps, God bless them. 
don't have a great identity. Like they, their identity is either, you know, the bad stuff that we've talked about on this show or nothing. Neither is good. I mean, you know, nothing's better than the other, but clearly I'm not trying to make light of that. But, but nonetheless, yeah, what they did sort of get at the end of the year was when he came in and, and Vanny came in and he, he had the big speeches and he's all big pumped up man and he, he's got all the stuff going on and he seems like a character that, that, that seemed to be something that they should lean into. They, they got a, they're going to be Team Vanny. And I was going to keep calling him Vanny rather than his full name because it's like a thing. Because <laughs> it, it, it brings back memories for Dwayne of Greg Vanny, even though it's Vanny Sartini he's talking about. Yes, exactly. So, so I, I think that, <laughs> that we should do something like that. And I'm trying to think, does, does that, like obviously the Amazon stuff's getting done a bit to death, of, you know, and there's not much going on. Once we've had Mourinho, what more are you going to go to from there? But um, this, I think, would be interesting. MLS should do more stuff like that and, and get their socials out there and just lean into this and have some fun with it. That's that's what I want to do. I want I want an Amazon crew following the Whitecaps around and, and having it be, you know, be in the Vanny show. Of that's course, it I would want. be called Andiamo! Andiamo! The Vanny Sartini show. Of course. There you go. I, I'll produce this podcast if, if he wants. Cause I could be whatever. You know, you know where to contact me, Vancouver. We can make it happen. There you go. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, and I think, you know, so we forget that sometimes. And it's been a lot of talk of the plague and a lot of talk of the, and I'm going to keep calling it the plague because it makes it seem better to me. than <laughs> Whatever whatever you need to do. Yeah. Um, a lot of talk of that and a lot of talk of, of injuries and stress about World Cup. And we forget sometimes that what we're talking about here is not all that important in the grand scheme of things. It's supposed to be fun. This is our hobby. Um, so, so that's, you know, some of this makes money off it too, but it's, it's essentially stems from a hobby. It stems from a love and it stems from a joy. And that's what tis the season for all that stuff. So, uh, Merry Christmas to you and yours. Happy holidays. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's my gifts. All right. Here's my last gift for this year. This one is for one of Canada's biggest export this year and over the last few years. And it's time, yeah, it's time to get paid. It's time to go somewhere big. And it's time to make the money. Show me the money. I'm giving Jonathan David the gift of a transfer. A transfer to a big club. Maybe even a transfer to a club wearing blue in the Premier League. That's called Chelsea. Hopefully that happens. But if not, I'm still giving him the transfer of a lifetime with the paycheck of a lifetime, a jackpot type of paycheck. Jonathan David, you deserve it. From $8 million a few years ago when you left Belgium for France, and now you're worth close to 50, and by the end of it all, who knows, that glass ceiling might be shattered, and you might even break Alfonso Davies' record of the biggest transfer for a Canadian player in Canada men's national team history. Yeah, he, he will break that he record. He will break that record. And he'll break the bank. And that's what I'm giving Jonathan David. A whole big bag. A whole big red velvet sack full of money. And, of course, a Chelsea jersey. Yeah. Well, sure. We'll, we'll see. But it was funny. Like, yeah, David will break Davies' record. But you know who's going to possibly break that again it would be Alfonso Davis if they tried to move <laughs> it's Alfonso Davis when Real Madrid comes to Milan it comes to Bayern Munich to buy him and they'll be like look we're giving you like a billion dollars yeah we I was actually I watched the midweek game the Leeds the Manchester City Leeds game at Opera Bob's and I was having a conversation with a, a gentleman there who uh, who worked for NYCFC for a while um, so he has some connections with CFG and we, he was saying, man, we should buy, we need a left back. We should buy him. And I was like, how much would he cost? And the whole bar got involved in this conversation. We basically fell on that he would be, it would be a um, hundred million yeah. dollar transfer. It'd probably. be like the most expensive defender ever bought. Like Virgil van Dyke and your $88 million, you can go sit down, son. Yeah. Well, that's, and, and to be clear, part of that's just the inflationary nature of the transfer market. But um, it, it also, yeah, it, it would even be real. The money would be big, and it would be real. He's been <laughs> two times in a row. He's been on the FIFA Best Eleven. So we're talking about a guy from Edmonton. Wait, yeah. can you imagine? Like, we're talking about a guy from Edmonton who is worth more than Virgil Van Dyke, who, before before getting injured a few years ago, was the most expensive defender ever bought, ever transferred, ever sold in the world of soccer. And I know it's blasphemy for me to say this out loud in Voyager circles, but I think he's a left back. Um, 
hey, <laughs> he might be the best left back in the world. And you know what? He actually changed the position. He changed what it means to be a left back. And, you know, that's what they say. Even if it's not your position, make it your position and make it count. And guess what Davies did? He made it count all the well, way to the bank. I mean, to very break it down to the, like the brass tacks of it all, it's, 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 he can run, get, he can gather speed. He can use his biggest weapon better coming from further back in the field. If he plays up top, he's not going to have the same level of ability to crank that thing up. And I think that's why they, what they saw in him at Byron. And I think that, you know, if, if Canada does go to Qatar, they probably will be sitting back a little bit, at least in one of the games. They'll be, you know, one of the seeded team in their group, whoever that will be, is going to be one of the top eight teams in the world, right? So, you know, that game you're going to be sitting back, you're going to want to hit him and counter it. And that's, he's got to play there then. You don't want to put him too high because he won't get the ball. He won't touch the ball. They'll just, they'll just mark him out. Yeah, you need the ball with him space in front of him, right? That's when he can actually use his speed is if he gets the ball, there's a ton of space in front of him. That's why he's so useful as a left back. There's a whole field in front of him. So Yes, I, I, it could be, it wouldn't necessarily be one of the top eight teams in the league, by the way. It could be Qatar, and that would be a dream draw in a lot yeah, of ways. Be, yeah, you might be able to get out of the group. But. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we're jumping a whole lot of hoops with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, but we're yeah. talking to draw. <laughs> exactly. By the, by the way, I want England. I want England. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you imagine? All right. On that note, let's once again remember, Jonathan David, stay healthy please. And hopefully you'll get that transfer and that paycheck. You deserve it. And that was our Christmas show. We also want to take a second and wish all our listeners, our fan of the show, downloaders of the podcast, viewers of videos, every single one of you hearing my voice right now. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making this a record year for soccer today. Dwayne, thank you for always answering the call. And of course, talking about soccer with me and uh, in front of our millions of viewers, I guess. Well, my pleasure, Kevin. Merry Christmas to you and, your, you and yours as well. Um, I might sneak on to Twitter spaces here and there over the break if because, you know, I do like to hear the sound of my own voice. God bless me. But <laughs> I just bless myself. God, that's a good you way to do that. That should be my last word. Yeah, you drop the mic. God bless Dwayne. God bless Dwayne. Drop the mic. And then that's a good way. On that note, you can follow this show at Soccer Today SPN and myself at Kev Laramie. If there's breaking news, we'll, of course, go and break it all down on our podcast feed. So make sure you subscribe to our podcast. We'll take a second and wish once again a great holiday season. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Feliz Año Nuevo. Joyeux Noel. a bonne année to everyone listening to us on this show. It's been a pleasure this year that was loud it was a pleasure this year we'll be back next year with a full full season look for more production value added to the shows five rings next year in olympic games winter olympics going to be amazing hopefully and everything goes into that vein on that note until next time which will be next year for Dwayne rollins i'm kev Laramie. we wish you health safety happiness And, of course, a great soccer.